Attackers leak alleged NVIDIA data, Samsung patches a major encryption flaw, and Ukraine versus Russia. Everything that we know so far in the cybersecurity battle. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for March 1st, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. No surprise, we are talking about Ukraine this week, so on to the first news story. At time of recording, NVIDIA has not confirmed a data breach incident occurred on their networks, but signs are pointing towards this being the case after a cyber attack took some of their products offline. Back on the 25th, NVIDIA did confirm reports that there was an incident that took down their systems for two days and they are currently investigating it. However, they did not say that it was a data breach. Developer tools and the email systems for the chip maker were affected, but none of their commercial activities saw any issues. Even though NVIDIA has not confirmed that this was in fact a data breach, a hacking group, which is called Lapsus, is claiming that they are behind the attack and say they stole data, which they released online. This database that they released is 20 gigs worth of a full one terabyte data set that Lapsus claims that they stole. Screenshots of the data leaked show what appears to be hashed employee passwords. Lapsus has not posted the rest and they are demanding that NVIDIA pay a ransom. In a turn of events though, Lapsus is now claiming that NVIDIA has hacked them back and infected their virtual machine with ransomware. The group says NVIDIA was able to do this because their VM had to be enrolled in mobile device management in order to gain access to NVIDIA's internal network. They also claim to have a backup of the data though, including schematics, drivers, firmware, NVIDIA's light hash rate tech, which is called LHR, SDKs, details about Falcon, which is NVIDIA's proprietary control processor, etc. It appears that Lapsus is into crypto mining because the hacking group requested that NVIDIA remove their LHR mechanism, which is on the GeForce RTX 30 GPU series. That tech reduces a GPU's mining power. They threaten to leak the hardware folder if NVIDIA does not remove this limitation from the 30 series hardware. The original leak was available via Amazon, but it has since been taken down, with Lapsus saying that they are switching to leaks via torrent instead. Other than confirming that an incident occurred, NVIDIA has not spoken on the subject since then. About 100 million Samsung smartphones include a severe design flaw that could have allowed an attacker to steal the cryptography keys for encryption. This is now patched, but it was discovered to affect Samsung Galaxy S8, S9, 10, 20, and 21 devices due to how the hardware encryption implementation, which is called Keystore, was designed. Now, Keystore resides within the trusted execution environment, which is AKA. A T E E, and it creates and stores the cryptographic keys for the device. This environment is isolated, which makes it much harder for anything within the TEE to be extracted. But according to a group of researchers from Tel Aviv University, Keystore was doing this wrong. It was exposing APIs in the form of a Keymaster trusted application, so an attacker who had root could extract those private keys. This included two main flaws with separate CVEs. First, there's CVE 2021-25444 and CVE 2021-25490. The first one was an initialization vector reuse flaw, and the second one was a downgrade attack. Now, after discovery, the researchers shared this information with Samsung and they were remediated in security updates that were pushed out in August and October of last year. The researchers explained that one of the major reasons that problems like this occur is because brands like Samsung and Qualcomm are very, very private about how they implement their cryptographic systems. They mentioned that these products should be audited and reviewed by independent researchers and they should not rely on reverse engineering proprietary systems. 
Before I get into the third story, I did want to say a big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support as always. And also a huge thank you to Ian and Percolate Anka for joining on patreon.com slash threatwire. And shout out to everyone who chose to upgrade their perk level last month. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story, which is of course all about Ukraine and Russia. Now, if you have been following along with Threatwire, you know that I started reporting on cyber attacks targeting Ukraine many, many weeks ago when these reports started appearing with more frequency. Now we are starting to see a full on cyber war happening between Russia and Ukraine, but also with the rest of the world. So here's what we know so far and how everything is unfolding. Early last week, the Ukraine government sent out a public request for ethical hackers to help with cyber defenses. Volunteers would be included in either a defensive or offensive campaign team, the former to help with protecting infrastructure and critical assets, the latter to help the Ukrainian military with cyber espionage and monitoring. Ukraine's Minister for Digital Transformation tweeted a call for volunteers for an IT army to fight back against Russian attacks and shortly afterwards, a task was given to volunteers to target 31 Russian government agencies, with IP addresses, storage devices, and mail services all a part of this list. That target also includes banks, critical infrastructure, and Yandex. Now keep in mind before becoming a lone cyber vigilante who just wants to help, reminder that it is likely illegal and it could compromise legitimate cyber procedures happening through government operations via these kind of initiatives. This call for arms came a couple of days after news surfaced about Ukrainian agencies, such as their Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Defense, and Internal Affairs being targeted by a DDoS attack. Two large Ukrainian banks were also targeted. This was confirmed by an internet watchdog called NetBlocks. Now, was it Russia? Well, according to the White House, yes, yes it was. They noted that these attacks are coming from the Russia GRU. Ukraine is also being targeted by data wiping malware, which was disclosed by Symantec and ESET shortly after those DDoS attacks, but this was not directly attributed to Russia. Another, which has been attributed to Russian-backed attackers, is malware called Cyclops Blink, which is being used as a botnet by the hacking group Sandworm. This new botnet malware is infecting home and small office network devices around the world, but the call for arms seems to be working though. On the 25th, Russia warned their domestic industries that they were experiencing cyber attacks. Hacker groups like Anonymous have publicly stated that they will be hitting Russia, and several Russian sites were rendered offline on Thursday and Friday. That included the state-run Russia Today TV channel, aka RT, of which Anonymous took credit for attacking. The Kremlin and other government-owned sites also experienced DDoS attacks and they were taken offline by the Ukrainian IT army. A clearer picture is forming of which groups are targeting which country and who is siding with who. The Belarusian hacking group Ghostwriter, aka UNC1151, created phishing sites targeting Ukraine, and the Russian Conti ransomware gang stated they would retaliate against critical infrastructure of anyone who targets Russia. So then someone leaked internal chat messages of the Conti ransomware group, including screenshots of internal Conti tools, servers hosting data, and internal communications. Many countries are now warning their own agencies, their own companies, and industries of potential for spillover from the these cyber attacks. As an example, the data wiper could start targeting devices outside of Ukraine accidentally. So even if you aren't within Ukraine, you should still be taking a proactive approach to strengthening your network security. Whew, I think that's everything that we know up to today when I'm recording this, Monday the 28th, but this is an ongoing story that I am following closely. I know that I have a lot of viewers in Ukraine and from Ukraine, so for our fellow humans, I am sharing resources where you can donate or you can support Ukraine over on my Twitter account, which is at snubs. Do you want to see more tech videos from me? You can check out my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to 
security tutorials. I did just post a video reviewing my top six favorite password managers for 2022. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well. I'm Shannon Morris and stay safe. I'll see you later. Bye, internet.